Once you have that all set, you can select each one of these individually and then go to Effect and under Photoshop Effects, Blur and apply a radial blur. We're going to use Zoom, Good Quality and the amount will be 37. Hit OK. And you can see the effect that had a pretty cool effect. Now select each one of these and go to apply that same radial blur. And that's Shift Control E. You use that. It's the same thing as going into the menu all those times. And you can see the very, uh, very cool effect that that had um, made these um, a little bit more like smoke um, and have that beam of light sort of feeling, giving them some atmosphere, some depth. Now lock down the light's big layer and show the light's small layer. And we have our small lights here. These we're going to do a little bit less to. Select each one in group. And also object expanded. Okay, object expand. Object expand. And object expand. We can use the gradient palette and click in there once and soak up the same gradient. We can have these going from bottom to top to give a sense of different type of light. And with each one of these, we're going to Effect, Distort, Roughen, Absolute. We'll make this three pixels instead. Hit OK. So that even has a bit less. And then with each one selected, we're going to come and use that warp and push these right in line with their sort of smoky big brothers so that they have kind of a different uh, different direction, certainly smaller but uh, equally interesting. Now selecting one, go to Effect, Blur, Radial Blur, Zoom, Good, 37, hit OK, and that'll do that. Then Shift, Control, E on each of these individually. And the reason why we do these individually is basically so that the objects themselves won't group together when we apply an effect to all of them. Now you can take your small lights and drum their transparency back to 50% of what they were. So they're very faint. Locking down your small lights, unlock your big lights. Double click on your warp tool and now we're going to scale this back to 100 by 100. With the small warp, just come in and give those extra extra distorts that let you know this isn't quite a mathematical um, equation happening here. Something to make it, you know, at least appear that these are a random act of nature um, as opposed to a computer generated simulation. And you can see my computer loading each time I go to do these warps. Now truly um, this is a graphically intensive effect that we have here. It's a Photoshop effect. Um, and if you don't feel like you have the RAM or the system resources that'll handle advanced graphic processing or maybe you're just messing around on your laptop, then wait to get on your desktop or a more powerful machine um, before going too crazy with these effects. Bring that out a little bit. So that's looking good. It's about where I want it. Now, with those all set, we'll lock down the lights big and small layer. And we're going to go click on our sky layer. We'll unlock it. I'll hide the gradient palette too. We'll zoom in. And we're going to add some stars to the sky. First, we'll select the ellipse tool from our menu. 
click once on the canvas and we're going to make a simple 3 pixel by 3 pixel circle and color that white. Nothing too special there. Now using the ellipse tool click again and make an 8 pixel by 8 pixel circle to which we'll color the inside white and we'll make the stroke nothing. And we're going to set that opacity to 30 percent. Now what you see here as I zoom in so you can look at that is a small white dot and a slightly faded bigger white dot. Lock down that big black background by doing control 2 after you select it and select just the two circles. In the align palette up here make sure your align is set to selection and not artboard and simply horizontal align and vertical align those until they're perfectly targeted center in each other. With those selected in your symbols palette come and create a new symbol we're going to call this star. Now you can delete that star right there. Zoom out and grab the symbol sprayer tool from your palette. Here with the star selected in your symbols palette begin to spray paint in your starry sky and go off the canvas let it bleed let it uh, trickle around and you'll see why maybe get a little bit more dense towards the top so you can see we created a lot of stars and and the reason why we made the glow so simple is because these lights are already taking up so much memory that we don't want to overtax the machine now we'll grab the symbol sprayer and we'll do it all again a second round of stars. This time try and fill in all of the gaps that you did not get uh, the first time with the first batch of stars. Going way off canvas here. These stars will go to Object, Transform, and we'll scale this to 180 percent and will also take its opacity down to 20 percent and you can see that created bigger faded stars I I would even recommend going down to 10 percent if you can still see those then with your big stars still selected and you can reselect them do a control C and a control F go to object transform scale and we're going to take these down to 50 percent and bring those opacity up to 30 percent so now you have a pretty varied starry background um, and you can even select all the stars if you like. Control G, group them, and bring down their opacity to 80% and really have a more subdued look to those stars. Now that we have our stars all set, we're going to Control Alt 2 and we'll have access to our background again. And in the gradient palette, take that dark color from our swatch and drag it right over into the gradient palette to get something that looks a little bit like that. Here, we're going to drag off and move over and adjust our gradient to be as follows. And we're even going to take that blue, the light blue, make it a bit more green and darken it down
Now show your options in the gradient palette and change this to a radial gradient. And you can see that has a much cooler effect. And grab the gradient tool as well. And here you'll be able to size this down and even scale it to be an oval and adjust the angle that it's coming at so you get a little bit more of a realistic type of lighting effect happening. Now finally these mountains that look so awful. Lock down your sky layer and unlock your mountains. With the mountain layer selected click on our original mountains and we're going to affect distort and transform and even roughen these click on preview to see what that'll look like at first it'll look a little crazy we'll do absolute and tick up the size until you start to see some nice rocks forming here and in the detail turn it down until you get just some general type of transformation happening and make sure corners checked off not smooth so those are a little bit better in terms of mountains still not too amazing here we're going to set its transparency mode to multiply so we just get the hard edge we're going to drag these down so they're a bit more rocky more extreme now we're going to draw out a second layer of mountains right above this layer what I find works well is if you where you went up on the first set of mountains go down and then down up down up that type of thing so you have uh, a different look do the same thing effect and apply that same roughen set this to multiply mode and scale these back to 50%. And you can see those are pretty faded. Bring them up a little bit higher. And take these mountains and do control C, control F. Go to object, transform and reflect them. Turn on preview, hit OK. And using shift and the arrow keys, just tap down a couple times to create an extra layer of mountains. If that's a little too dark, you have a hard time seeing that, or it's not quite the effect you, uh, you intended, I will rotate these and, you know, just make them fit to the look that you were looking for originally. I'll even take those original mountains and scale those back to, say, 70% opacity. And just play with the transparency until you basically get a mountainous type of look that um, you really want. Right back here, go to 30. And then once you can see these layered mountains in here, then that's about the look you want. Now we broke the canvas in all of this, um, so when you go to save this for web, which is Control alt shift s how do you like that keyboard shortcut? Do I get a, an award for that? No? All right. <laughs> when you do a Control alt shift s and you go to save this as a JPEG or a PNG, you'll notice that um, it does not show anything that bled off the edge, so um, you should be good to go and that is it how to create a vector aurora borealis or northern lights in adobe illustrator cool effect cool look go check it out and keep designing